Welcome to the After Chat. I'm Michael. I'm Ellis. And today we are going to be talking about Jonah and the whale. You ready? I'm ready. I'm excited about this one. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Welcome to the After Chat. Real questions. Real talk. Real life. All right. How are you doing, man? I'm great. How are you? Doing very, very well. It's yeah. been a good day so far. It's been good. Uh, what's something that you've learned about yourself in the last three months? In the last three months? Um, all right. I'm not I'm not trying to prognosticate anything here, okay? Okay. But. Prognosticate? Yeah. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. I pulled that one out of the vault. I don't, I don't even know where that came from. I've learned in the last three months that I really love hanging out with babies. Yeah, yeah. My a lot of my friends are like have young kids right now, and so me and my wife are like the fun friends who don't have any kids. So we can just come hang out, and man, babies are great. When as soon as they start like running around and doing their own thing, I'm like, ah, I don't know what to do about this. But babies, that they're, they're awesome. No, that that it, it's a fun age. Yeah, especially you know whenever you can hand them back. Yes. You know, like, exactly. I think, I think that that's what makes it more fun. That is key. I should have included that. Yes. How about you? Um, well, this is something I learned a few weeks ago that it's still, I'm a fairly competitive person. Mm-hmm. Like whenever I'm doing something, I like to do it well. Uh, even if it's something that I've never done before, <laughs> like I have a very high expectation and standard for myself to just really jump right in there and nail it on the first try. And if I don't, I can sulk. Mm-hmm. Um, but here recently... Went and did some kayaking, mm-hmm. and I am just if it's if it's a single person kayak, like I'm all over the place. Like I <laughs> I feel like I do pretty well. We've got someone down there like making a face like that's not really a true statement, but I feel for me I did fairly well. Okay, but whenever you do like the double ones, mm-hmm. I cannot steer those things because it's it's much bigger. There's more weight in it, and but my daughter Madeline is awesome at steering so we had to stop um in bear creek lake we found a little marshy spot and we had to we had to switch just the entire configuration of everybody that was there and put madeline in the front and Mm -hmm. i was kind of steering from the back of the boat but dude madeline was all over the place and i was like (laughs) very impressed with her while simultaneous being slightly disappointed in myself (laughs) for not doing very well right so that was definitely like i've learned about myself i'm not that great of a kayaker (laughs) Um, awesome. But I hope to be, and I'm going to get a lot more practice this summer. You just, like, found out the level you were at. Yes. So, yeah, that was just establishing a baseline. Yeah. There you but go. But I've got nowhere to go but up. There you go. Have you ever been kayaking? I have not. I feel like I wouldn't be very good at that either. So. I, singles is way easier. Yeah. Like, you can, it's it's just easier to maneuver. It's a little bit, it's smaller. It's mm-hmm. There's not as much weight, like I said. But you got to go out to Bear Creek. It's, yep. it's super, it's super, super awesome. Every time we've gone uh, there's always like those heron birds. They're they're terrible to look at. They make awful sounds, but they're <laughs> but they're it's still cool to see nature out there. There's you can almost always guarantee a bald eagle sighting. Ooh. Um it's it's a great time. Yeah. And it's not that far down the road. I'll have to check it out. So that's yeah, that's mine. Okay. If you could bring back a fashion trend, what would it be and why? Hyper color shirts. Those things were so stinking cool back in the day i thought they were anyway so like you're wearing it and then as you get hot and you sweat like the shirt starts to change colors but like not like sweat disgusting colors but like it might go from (laughs) 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 but like from like but from like blue to yellow or blue to green or like yellow to red like they were awesome wow i thought those things were were super cool no i have no no, nope. I have no frame of reference. No, for this. they're awesome. <laughs> they're awesome. I'll see if they still make it, and okay. then and then if the color of the shirt will not clash with the lights here in the room, you'll wear one. We'll wear one. All right, cool. and then All and right. then as the temperature rises <laughs> throughout the episode, it'll just start to change colors. <laughs> but those things were awesome. I thought they were so uh, super cool as a kid. Yeah. So I don't. <laughs> I don't see these in the NBA anymore, so I think this is a this is a valid answer. But mine would be pull away pants, hundred percent. 
100 yeah. percent how like cool just it, as a daily wear yes i would <laughs> i i don't even love layers but i would wear a pair of shorts under if i knew at any point in the day i could just push. that would be awesome the, i i you know what i hadn't th- considered that you gonna change your answer? I'm kinda, I, well, I'm not changing my answer. I want the hypercolor shirts, but I also want them in conjunction with some tearaway pants. I I will find a pair of pullaway pants and wear them for an episode. Jokes on you because you can't see them, but I will make that commitment. Here. That'll be something yes. that, that that'll be something you can do in the uh, Facebook group. There we you go. Just, we can just have we can just have Sarah make a reel of you just tearing away your pants. So. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So. What are you unbeatable at? Unbeatable. <sighs> Any sports video game. Any sports video game. Any of them. I don't know, dude. I'm pretty good at MLB The Show. Oh, yeah? Unbeatable? Yeah. Unbeatable. unbeatable. Oh, we got a Lenny sighting. Yo. Oh, okay, challenge accepted. Okay. All right. All right. I, I'm good at MLB The Show. Consider, like, no joke. Consider the gauntlet thrown. Okay. All right. We can get in on that. All right. Go to our Twitch channel. No, I'm just kidding. We're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> Find us on the app <laughs> yeah. chat on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, like, so back in the day, I haven't played Madden in a long time. Mm-hmm. But back in the Army, that was something that we would do. There would always be, like, a Madden throwdown. Mm-hmm. And I was really, really good. And, I mean, it was like the O2 Rams, so you had Warner and Folk. And I was I was pretty sick at that. Yeah. So I would I would get I would need some practice to get back and get back in Madden mode because I'm sure it's changed a lot since mm-hmm. then. But I still play fairly regularly on MLB the show. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not bad. I think there are some that I definitely have more rust than others, but if you gave me an hour, if you let me pick it up, give me an hour, get my bearings. Yeah. I feel pretty good about my chances. So. No, as, as long as it's not like a Tecmo Bowl thing, like back on the original <laughs> Nintendo, whoever got whoever whoever got the Oakland Raiders first was guaranteed <laughs> to win because right. the Chiefs, who oh uh, I think it was like the Chiefs and the Broncos, I forgot the fourth team that was on there, mm-hmm. but whoever got Bo Jackson and the Raiders, like it was oh, game over. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, I I would. That could be a Facebook, uh, a Facebook group situation where we where we play some Madden and some show bonus content. That would be fun. I think it'd be fun. All right, Loch Ness monster, believe in it? Because we're going to be talking about Jonah, so we're looking at weird cryptic. I don't know that creatures. I've ever considered this question before. Right now, I'm going to go with no, only because I'm pretty confident you're going to go with yes. Oh, most def. There like, you go. Well, I, it's not that I I don't necessarily believe in it, but I want to believe in it. Mm-hmm. Like I I want to believe that there's weird things out there that we haven't seen or or really gotten a good look at. And I think that would, just like with Bigfoot, like mm-hmm. I wish that there was a, a like a Harry and the Henderson style Bigfoot out there, being one with the world and all of nature and just being a, a just a very generous, magnanimous like creature of the forest. Yeah. Um, I want to believe that there's a Loch Ness monster just living its best life, just swimming. Like I think it would be cool. Excellent roller coaster, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. I think it's gone now. So what was it? It was great. The Loch Ness Monster. Oh, it's a ro- roller coaster called the Loch Ness Monster. Okay, yeah, it was really cool. Anyways, completely off to- off topic, but all right. <clears throat> Desert Island trapped trapped in a fish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's a weird twist. I I guess I guess a lantern like Geppetto. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. From Pinocchio. <laughs> um. A three day supply of food and water, I, I guess. Yeah. That's that's what I'm after. Like okay. just trying to drag that out and just stay alive as long as possible. So oh, what would I bring? That's yeah. what I'm supposed to Okay. Uh what would I bring? Yeah, I probably some source of light. I don't like my wife loves to sit in a pitch black room and watch whatever she's watching and I cannot stand that. Mm. I must have at least like a lamp on or something. Okay. So I think being in total darkness for not that long would drive me pretty crazy. So a source of light. Yes, that's my answer. Air freshener, maybe. It's got to yeah. be, be pretty grimy, stinky in there. Yeah. But, no. I felt smell like a fish market. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> One place you would never visit. <clears throat> One place I would never visit. Huh. I've never considered, like, I, a place yeah. where I would just, like, ooh, gross, no. I've, like, I've, I'm not going. I feel like the normal question is, like, where would you want to go? And I've thought about that. Where would I not want to go? Any like anywhere where it's super cold, I I'm I don't do cold. I don't do being cold. It's not fun. So anywhere where it drops below, look below zero for sure. But I, I could even go even higher than that. <laughs> um, I'm I'm good. I'm chilling. So 
any place any place that's got more humidity than Virginia. Mm. Like I've that's you know coming answer. from the Midwest, <laughs> the first time I did basic training in Georgia, and yep. it was my first time ever in Georgia, and it was in uh, June, July, and August. Man, I'm telling you, I got off the plane and you just you just feel the air. Mm-hmm. You're you're disgusting and sweating by by nine a.m. Um, so I'm really not traveling a whole lot farther south than than here in Virginia. That's valid. Like, that's it for me. People in Florida, I think about people in Florida who like are in business, like they have to get dressed up for work. I'm like, how do you do? How it? do you make it? Yeah. Like, uh, it sounds terrible. No, it's Tommy Bahama shirts and little straw hats, like all day. <laughs> <laughs> like that's <laughs> that would be my that would be my uniform. Yeah. Like if I lived in Florida, I would wear the pullaway pants. There you go. <laughs> Hyper color shirt. Like you start out in the morning, it's blue. <laughs> Two o'clock, <laughs> nice and yellow. <laughs> Just to tie it all together. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, like we mentioned, we're going to be talking about um, Jonah, yep. uh, who he is, or who he was. Um, rather, and and kind of what he did. And this, I mean, it's a short book. I think it's four chapters. Yep. Just a brief overview of Jonah. Jonah was um, a prophet uh, back in the day. He served under uh, King Jeroboam. Mm-hmm. We get a mention of him in Second Kings 14, uh, 25. And that's where we read that he was the, about, he, they're referencing the king here. And it said he was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel uh, from one place to the other in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant Jonah. Mm -hmm. Outside of this, um, that's his only mention in the Old Testament. And here in a little bit, uh, you'll look at the one from where he was in the New Testament, where he's mentioned in the New Testament by Jesus. Um, So that's kind of, that's, we know, we know that about him. Mm -hmm. And we know that God told him, to go and preach to the Ninevites. Yep. And that was a group of people that were, that Israel was always kind of warring with. And Jonah didn't want to go preach to the Ninevites. And so he jumped on a boat, was trying to get as far away as he possibly could. Bad storm came. He said, if you pitch me over, then the side, then the storm will stop, which it did. He got swallowed by a whale. Mm-hmm. And then he wrote a prayer in the whale that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. There's There's been a little contention uh, about where that, about what type of prayer that is. And we'll, we'll uh, talk about that. And then we'll find out the how it all kind of shook out there at the end and whenever he has a conversation with God. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. So we reach, we, uh, mentioned the, uh, the other, the other, the only other mention of him in the old Testament Mm -hmm. that he served as a King. Um, so the Ninevites, they were, they were a group of bad dudes. Yep. They, they (laughs) were known for, if anybody's familiar with game of Thrones, um, very much kind of like uh, house Bolton, Mm. they were known for flaying people just bad people all the way around. Um, they, the city of Ninevite would be now in modern day Mosul, Iraq. Mm-hmm. So there's still like remnants of it in places where you can go and see where it was. It was founded by, I love this name, Nimrod, <laughs> uh, who was the grandson of Noah, mm-hmm. rumored to be a big, like larger than life guy in the realm of the giants, even maybe, yeah. uh, depending upon where you look at uh, and, different accounts that you read about of him. Also, fun fact, so Nimrod founded the city of, of Babel, mm-hmm. which would go on to become Babylon. He founded Ninevite, and also on the plains of Shinar, which is where kind of all of his uh, areas were that he built after the flood. He is rumored, or there's some accounts that attribute the building of the Tower of Babel mm-hmm. to him, which is you know, the Tower of Babel in Babel, which yep. became Babylon. Yep. And I just think that's a cool story. And you that can read cool. about that in Genesis 11, 1 through 9, where they all decided that they were going to stack up a bunch of bricks and build a tower all the way to the heavens uh, to kind of be on the same footing with God. And what's cool about that is, so God's talking, and he's like, you know, we're just going to change their language and scatter them about. Mm-hmm. So I just think how, like, I love imagining how things would be like if I was watching it on a movie. Mm-hmm. So there's this dude, right? Him and his pals, they're sitting there. 
they're building, they're making mud bricks, like just shoulder to shoulder like we are now. And then just one second, they're sitting there, they're talking, they're having a conversation. And then bam, they're in modern day, like Montana, where it would be <laughs> looking at a herd of buffalo. Like, and speaking a completely different language. Right. Like, I just think that's like insanely comical. Whenever you read it, like there's there's a weird amount of comedy in there. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like something out of a sitcom about the Bible. <laughs> yeah, not something that's in the actual Bible. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, and then eventually Jonah goes. He he talks to these people. They end up repenting. But then later on, the Ninevites end up being uh, prophesied against by the prophet Nahum, which is another book here in the Old Testament, and about how they're going to be destroyed, and the the Midian Empire ends up doing that but so that's kind of who jonah was called to go and uh, uh minister to right uh by god and so that that's no, jonah in a nutshell but what whenever you look at that what kind of like whenever you hear the story of jonah or you read it like what yeah. jumps out to you well um you you mentioned uh the ninevites and then the fact that they were not great um so Jonah's called to go and preach to them, and you know there are there are occasions where God sends somebody for correction or to get them back on the right path. Um, there, there's nothing really to indicate that that's that was Jonah's assignment here. It was probably what is more often the case, which mm-hmm. is, hey, go preach my name and my goodness to these to this group of people who who don't know or who need to hear it. Jonah just didn't want to. He yeah. was like, he was like, these people are not great. I, I don't think I don't want to do that. So my and question, it, and it's yeah. an insanely human reaction. Oh yeah. Like I don't like them. I don't want to see good thing. I don't want to go and help these people and serve these people. Yeah. So I'm wondering, uh, has God ever called you to go do something that you didn't particularly want to do? I, I don't know. I don't know if there's ever been anything where I felt called to do something and I was just like, no. Mm-hmm. But there has been times where I've I've served at this one food pantry on it for years. Mm-hmm. I would go there and before it ended up shutting down. But I like that was part of my my thing. Every single month I would serve here way back in the day. Um, and then just as soon as it got done, it was called like the perfect storm Sunday where I would serve either in kids or in lights and then go do, and then go do that. But there would be people that would come in mm-hmm. to get served where, and this was way back in, in my beginning with, with my walk with uh, Jesus, where I would, I would be judgmental of them, mm. like based on like their car that they pulled up into, or the, just their, their attitude and demeanor while they were there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's been times where on my on my bad days where that would happen to me. I mean, and we, we kind of see that here where yeah. we judge those that are, are different than us or maybe behave in ways that we don't necessarily like. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in this case, it's a lot easier to do because they would flay their enemies, you know, out in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but I mean, it's all a scale, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can think of, I can think of a few. Uh, there's, there's one guy who I went to college with, uh, this was before I was ever going to church. Who we've like kept in contact since we graduated, and I've been trying to get him to consider church and mm-hmm. give it a give it a try. And um, it felt like there was a lot of progress in like a short amount of time at the beginning, but since then it's kind of stagnated, and it feels like there's not a lot of progress being made. So, um, like in my own humanity, I'm like. You know, I got other things to do. Yeah. <laughs> There's like I don't feel like this is really going anywhere. But um, God's continued to nudge me. Hey, you need to you need to reach out to this guy. You need to talk to him. Um, you need to keep trying. I'm like, God, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah, I got I got other things to do. I got other people to talk to. Like, this isn't going that anywhere. That would probably be more receptive. Yeah, but yeah, that's for sure. the person that God's put on your heart. Right. Yeah. So that's 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 it. It's kind of like an ongoing one. So yeah. Nope. Totally got you. Yeah. Um, so whenever we look here, like we mentioned a little bit ago, there's a prayer here. Mm-hmm. It's, it's chapter two. So this yep. is, this is after, uh, Jonah has been on the boat The like a terrible storm comes and he, you know, everybody's trying to figure out why they're doing it. And I mean, as a result of this, these people end up worshiping God that after Jonah kind of tells them, you know, who he is and what he is. And, um, they at least make, they make an offering to him, but the prayer 
Mm-hmm. Do you want to, Do you want to read it? Yeah, or, sure, I'll okay. read it. So uh, this is uh, Jonah chapter two. It says, "Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. He said, "I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and He answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord." You have driven me from your presence, yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves, and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth, whose gates lock shut forever. But you, O Lord my God, snatched me from the jaws of death as my life was slipping away. I remembered the Lord. And my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows. For my salvation comes from the Lord alone. It's not a prayer of repentance. <laughs> and Lenny just shouted no. <laughs> but it's not. But okay. So wh- I had no idea that this was even like a like a matter of of debate. Yep. About about what type of prayer this was. Mm -hmm. Like, Jonah's not in a position to, like, bargain with God, and he's not saying that, you know, he's sorry for running. Mm -hmm. He's just simply stating that he, Mm -hmm. thank you for saving my life in this weird, bizarre way of being swallowed by a fish. Yeah. I don't. I don't know where. I don't know where the idea of this being a repentance prayer, a prayer came from. Because at no point in it does he say, "I'm sorry for running and disobeying." He just simply says, "Thank you for me being alive here in this fish." Yeah, I found the uh, in verse eight just the the weird swipe at others. Yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting. <laughs> Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies. Like, bro, you weren't talking about anything like that. Yeah. Where, where'd that come from? Just a weird out of nowhere backhand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like to, to them. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the infamous them. But like, for real, if you'll, if you look up, just Google Jonah's prayer in, yeah. the, in the whale and it's taught on like, this is, the example for how, how to, pray, to repent. pray a prayer of repentance. I'm like, bro, we got Psalm 51 in here. No, that was I, a Jonah's like, prayer all day. Like <laughs> yeah. I go, like whenever I know I need to do bad, I yeah. just kind of reword that to fit what I'm apologizing yeah. for. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and and just kind of recommit to not going that way. Yeah. No, like this is just a it, it's just a prayer saying, wow. I can't believe I'm alive, but thank you for saving me. I can't believe I'm inside a fish. No, I mean, wow. just, just, <laughs> wow. <laughs> just, so, no, I, I don't know where, I don't know where the idea of that being a repentance, a repentance prayer came from, but it's definitely interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> but I think, I think it's a good example of just saying thank you, mm-hmm. like, I, I think it's I think it's good for that. In my distress, I called to the Lord and He answered me. Yeah. Like I imagine when He was going overboard and He was bouncing around, He was probably like, "Please, Lord, save me." Yeah. And I mean, it's not mentioned there, but I have to. Uh, if I'm getting thrown overboard during a storm, like please help. Yeah. I, I think I'm going there. Like yeah. even if not like vocally in my heart and soul, I'm doing it. Um, and He's just saying thank you for 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 hearing me. There's like there's nothing inherently bad in it. Like no. even the swipe that I talked about earlier, like that that sentence is true. But yeah, um, like to say it's repentance of any kind, it's just <laughs> a little far fetched. I don't get it. I don't see it. But if anybody, I, if anybody's got another take on it, like put it in the Facebook group. Yeah, we would. I would love to to hear how you get there. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if if I'm always open to be convinced, but sure. on this, I, I think it's pretty settled that it's not a prayer of friends. <laughs> so from there he he gets uh and at and after the end of it like we get a one a one sentence uh closure to a uh, closing to Jonah chapter 2 after the prayer um I will say salvation comes from the Lord and then it just goes and the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah <laughs> on to dry land. I mean it doesn't get much more clear than that. So when you have a comment uh oh. No, no, not at all. Okay. I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I don't even know if it was a good prayer at all, but that's my opinion. 
He doesn't acknowledge at all as to why he's in the fish. His disobedience to God is why he's there. But he never acknowledges, uh, I screwed up. Nope. No, I, but I think we're I think we're getting angry about it being something that it's not still like to go back like. Not angry. Well, no, but I think I think we're I think we're being unnecessarily so harsh angry. to Jonah. Like I think I think he's just like, wow, I'm in the belly of a fish. I'm not dead, yeah. and I'm still alive. Mm. Like I called on the Lord to save me, and is that that's how it started, right? Mm-hmm. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and He answered me. Like I think that I think he's just he's just saying thank you. <laughs> I mean, yes, I think if doing an after action review with Jonah on dry land, we could probably come come to him and say, "Yo, bro, like you could have done a little bit better with that prayer right there." Yes, but I think in the <laughs> I yes. think in the heat of the moment, <laughs> we need to have a, a prayer debrief with Jonah. This we there's some things I would have left some Google Docs comments here. All right? Yeah, okay. like I think we all would have. Like Jonah, you know, maybe up top admit what you did wrong. Yeah, like we could have words. Stubborn. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, I mean, he what went, were you doing for two days? We don't know if he was unconscious. Maybe if he was unconscious, like, would you come back and say, "Okay, well, that's all right." That's true. <laughs> I, I, I would love to give Jonah the chance to explain himself. Is I think it's the point we're getting to. Maybe here. on the other side of eternity, we'll get that shot. Yes. Like, we'll be, like you know, Jonah, what what happened there? Yeah. Like, you could have. Where were you? you could have done better? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Um, so then. Uh, Jonah, he, 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 the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message that I give you. And Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Can we just real real quick, he says this prayer, the, the fish vomits him out. And, and God, God just, circles back. God just repeats what he said before. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> and this time, Jonah obeyed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> My dad is saying, how about now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, some it. Sometimes we need a little, a little bit of a detour and and to get put back on track. And that's clearly that's clearly what happened here. Yes. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to the Nineveh. <clears throat> and went to the city of Nineveh. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for uh, Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. And when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with, sack, with sackcloth and sat down in the dust. And this is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. And when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruct the destruction he had threatened. You know, we're in a little bit. We're going to watch a clip from a message on this book um, mm-hmm. that explores this really well. You go, you should go check out the whole thing. Um, but uh, one of the things that I think is funny is twice now God tells Jonah to go preach to the Ninevites. Mm-hmm. He finally does it after disobeying the first time, and he gets to Nineveh, and we get. One sentence from Jonah, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. <laughs> like, that seems like the most minimal of... Good preaching. <laughs> 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 like, that, like, just the bare minimum of effort. Yep. Like, that's 40 more days mm-hmm. and Nineveh will be overthrown. But at that, that's all it took. Yeah. Like, for for everybody to proclaim a fast and even the king to... and I. I like I mentioned before, like I, I find like, what does that look like? Like to just put on sackcloth and sit down in the dust. That, that's something. I mean, I've like just an old baseball field. And, like you just go sit at yeah. shortstop and just and put on sackcloth. Next time I read Psalm 51, I'll, I'll go out in the field and yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do down, the whole deal. The whole we'll deal. go down to the local high school yeah. and get a sackcloth and just sit down and yep. just say, you know what? 
Created me and cleaves spirit, oh Lord. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> take away my pull away pants so I don't get them dirty, and there then I'll go. sit down in the dirt. It'll be great. But that's but that that was all it took for for the people to to change their ways. Yeah. And that staved off destruction for for quite some time until at least the time of Nahum, whenever he comes along and announces it, and then it ends up uh, happening. But I mean, that was a lot of people that got saved mm-hmm. right there as a result. Um, and then after, after that it was done, uh, but to Jonah, that seemed, and this is short, so, I mean, I'll sure. just go ahead and read it. Yeah. Uh, but, and then in chapter four, but jo- but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home, this is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Like, still, fully human, like, the whole way. And I think that's that's one of the things that that makes Jonah so relatable to people. Like, he would, like, he hated these people so much that he would rather now die yeah. than to see them be saved. Yeah, that's, that's wild. I also think the other thing I think it illustrates is just the nature of God, like with like just a single drop of obedience from Jonah, the destruction of Nineveh yeah, was still able an to be entire related. city. And I was mean, saved. he he disobeyed before, and he was like, "Take away my life!" After so there was no there was no like there was really no moment where Jonah's heart was in this, but yeah. God was still able to do it through his obedience. And but like you said, that that's an impact from just one single person, right? Like just through their obedience, saved. I think it, it's going to go on to say like one hundred twenty thousand, yeah, or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that that just speaks to what God can can do with you. But I also think this shows. I mean, Jonah here is being extremely raw with his emotions to yeah. God. Yeah, and, that's true. And God didn't strike him dead. Like God listened to him. Yeah. Like he didn't say, well, I'm like, I mean, he's not affirming what he said. Like he, we're going to look here in a minute what God does say to him. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we can take whatever it is we're feeling to God. And right. I think this is just a, you know, just an amazing example of that where we see both sides of what, what we mentioned here, the impact that one person ha- can have on a multitude of people through their obedience. But also, even if we don't necessarily like what we're doing, or like what we're being called to do, not our will, but yours. Right. Yeah. Um, but the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? And Jonah had gone outside and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter. <laughs> like, what does that look like? <laughs> like, a, like a little lean to. Um, <laughs> there he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. Even in his sulking, like God provided some sort of comfort to him. Mm -hmm. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. So like, and that's a miracle right there. Like he made a plant sprout and grow and provide shade for him. So that's like, that's a legit miracle that we've seen. But the second one is the being (laughs) surviving, the being swallowed by a fish. And then that one. Um, but at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. And when the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die. And he said, it would be better for me to die than live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is. He said, and I'm so angry. I wish I were dead. (laughs) Like just being just, but again, like God can take it Mm -hmm. and, But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? That's it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's basically, whenever I read that, He's got his priorities a little mixed up. Yes. Like he's more concerned and ang- and he's more concerned about that plant that was doing something for him than all of those th- thousands of souls mm-hmm. that were there that he literally just through his obedience changed the trajectory of 
like their whole lives and for multiple generations until eventually they they fall back and and end up getting destroyed but i mean that was a whole lot of people that were saved through his obedience and he's more angry about this plant than the fact that he just saved them and to your point like God isn't scolding him or coming down on him. He's no. trying to show him what he's trying to say and trying to repackage it a bunch of different ways. Yeah. And Jonah just <laughs> is not going to see Not going to get he's it. He's not having it. So, so I, I wish that there was like an epilogue to this. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> what happened like two years later? Like, where's Jonah at? Right. Like, like, is he out there like crushing it, doing good, like saving all the people, the, the enemies of Israel, like doing his thing or... Or is he still sitting there looking grumpy outside the city walls <laughs> underneath his shelter with a sunburned head? Yeah. Like, I don't know. But I think I would love I would love to to see that mm-hmm. or how that played out. You mentioned we got a clip from yep. I think this uh, from Elijah mm-hmm. uh, on this on this topic. Yep. Check this out. Ultimately, God loves everyone and his forgiveness isn't limited by anyone or anything. And Jonah knew that. God shows that time and time again to Jonah, to the Ninevites through his forgiveness, to the sailors at the beginning of his story. Jonah just didn't like it. He didn't like that God loved his enemies. And we know that God loves everyone and his forgiveness isn't limited by anyone or anything. God has shown us time and time again in our own lives and in the lives of people around us. But are we like Jonah? Do we not like that God loves our enemies? And in the end, that's the real question God poses to Jonah. It's the same question that he asked us all these years later. Is it okay that God loves my enemies? I think we have to be. I think so too. I I think that's what God's trying to show us here. And I think one of the things that we have to we have to recognize in in everyone, whether I mean, in, in Jonah's case and in, in, in all of our cases, whether we like it or not, every single person on this planet bears the exact same image of God that we do. Mm-hmm. And we need to and the only way that we can do it is through the power of, of God and his Holy Spirit working in us and renewing our minds and changing our hearts is like that's the only way that we can really fully recognize that and then want other people to to come along and be saved and know Christ and know God just like we do. Yeah. And you know, I think it's easy to fall into the trap of well, this person or this group deserves God's love and grace and forgiveness, but this group, this group doesn't, doesn't because of what they believe, because of what they've done and like the the truth is none of us do. So we're all in the same boat, you know? I, I can't stand that song, but anyways, <laughs> point still stands. Yes. And, and it also goes to the way that we, God see, and this is, this is a bitter pill for a lot of people to, mm-hmm. to swallow. God sees all sin the same mm-hmm. and we don't like, yeah. we will justify and rationalize and even, you know, play down our sins or the sins of those in our particular little in group and then ramp up others. And yes. I mean, there, and I mean, and there's some, not all sin has the same earthly consequence, you know. I mean, if you, there's some sin that radiates out and impacts people in far more uh, bad ways than others, but at the end of the day, God sees it all the mm-hmm. same. God sees it all the same. Yeah, uh, as humans, we tend to treat sin like I don't know a round of Jeopardy. Yeah. Like <laughs> some some sins are on the bottom, like a thousand bucks or whatever, and it's like, well. You did a thousand dollars sin, but I only did five hundred. So like you're but, way you're way worse than me. But you did two five hundred sins. Two, you know what? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so it all ends up equaling the same. It's just a matter of scale. Mm-hmm. But we have to be able to recognize, and like I said, the only way that I can, the only way that I think we can really truly do this is through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. Yeah, yeah. Um. So that's that's Jonah. Yeah. Closing thoughts. Yeah, I just you know. I think uh, kind of what we were saying before, you see what God can do with even a little bit of obedience, even reluctant, minimal effort obedience. That's how powerful God is, and uh, we can try to grow to be more like him um, and see people and see sin and see all those things the way he sees them. 
I think I think for me it's we can we can express our feelings to God and regardless of, of how we we take it to them God will treat us the exact same way that he treated Jonah yeah he was patient with Jonah he gave him a second chance he revealed his heart to him and his character and and worked with him so that way Jonah could align his will with his yeah and and the way that the way that he did that with Jonah he will do that for every single one of us if we put ourselves in a position to have that done yeah so yeah. I thought this was a good I thought this was a good conversation this was fun all right let us know what you think in uh, the reviews and we hope to see you in our Facebook group and as always if you leave us a review and we read it you have a chance to get a mug yeah and we will see you all next week yeah. thanks for joining us for the after chat if you enjoyed this episode share it with others post about it on social media or leave a rating and review to be the first to hear our next episode be sure to hit the subscribe button and get notifications for new content. You can also follow us on social media on Instagram at PCC Wired and Facebook at Passion Community Church. For additional resources and links, check out the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on The After Chat.